Hello Year 12s and welcome to this video on Motivation Theories. This is the third and final of three videos in this series on Motivation Theories. There are four things that you need to do while you are listening to this video. The first thing is to take the very best Cornell notes that you can. The second thing is to use the pause and rewind functions. Use the pause function if you need to stop this video to take notes. Use the rewind function to go over any information. The third thing that you need to do is to have your vocabulary sheets open in front of you so that you can include in your vocabulary sheets the definitions of any key terms as well as the meanings of any words that you may be unfamiliar with. The fourth and final thing that you need to do is to have your summary books open in front of you. As we go through this video, I will tell you what to write in your summary books. Once you've finished watching this video, please read the pages from the textbook referred to on this slide. And if you find any additional information from that reading that you think is useful, supplement your Cornell notes with that information. Well, let's get started then. We've already seen that employees are critical to the success of a business because the business relies on its employees to achieve the business objectives of the business. One of the biggest challenges that managers face is to manage their employees effectively. That is, to manage them in a way that motivates those employees to achieve the business objectives. In this series of three videos, we look at three theories of motivation. That is, theories about how managers can motivate their employees to achieve the business objectives. Later on, we'll look at the strategies that managers can use to motivate their employees. And we'll see how these strategies are supported by each of these different theories of motivation. Each of these three theories of motivation proceeds on the basis that employees will be motivated to achieve the objectives of a business if the achievement of those objectives is consistent with employees satisfying their own needs or achieving their own goals. Put another way, the key to a business achieving its business objectives is to align the individual goals of each employee with the business objectives of the business, so that by achieving their own individual goals, each employee of the business will be contributing to the achievement of the business objectives of the business. The difference between the three theories of motivation that we'll be looking at is in their conception of what motivates employees. Let me remind you of the learning intentions for this series of videos, um, which you already should have written in your Cornell notes. The first learning intention is that you should be able to explain the key principles of three theories of motivation. These three theories are Maslow's Hierarchy of Needs, Locke and Latham's Goal Setting Theory, and Lawrence and Naraya's Four Drive Theory. These key principles will be explained in this series of three videos. The second learning intention is that you need to be able to examine and apply the key principles of these three theories of motivation. We'll be achieving this learning intention through you undertaking in class a series of learning activities that require you to apply uh, the key principles of each of the three theories to case studies and case scenarios. In this video, we'll be looking at our third theory of motivation, which is Lawrence and Naraya's four drive theory. According to Lawrence and Naraya's four drive theory, employees are motivated by four drives or desires. Each of these drives is included in your vocabulary sheets, so make sure that you include a definition of each of these drives as we work through this slide. The four drives are as follows. First, the drive to acquire. This is an employee's drive or desire to obtain things such as higher pay, promotion, praise, status and power. A strategy to satisfy this drive is to provide rewards such as bonuses and promotions which are clearly linked to performance. 
The second drive is the drive to learn. This is an employee's drive or desire to have a job that is interesting and challenging. A strategy to satisfy this drive is to provide employees with challenging work that encourages them to learn new skills and knowledge. This will improve employee engagement and reduce staff turnover and absenteeism that is caused by having a boring job. The third drive is the drive to bond. This is an employee's drive or desire to be part of a team where the members respect and support each other. A strategy to satisfy this drive is to develop a corporate culture of collaboration and teamwork. The fourth and final drive is the drive to defend. This is an employee's drive or desire to protect themselves, for example, through having access to or the benefit of a fair process for resolving any complaints they may have, for assessing their performance, and for making decisions that impact on them. A strategy to satisfy this drive is to create fair and transparent processes to deal with complaint resolution, performance management, and decision making. This could include adopting a consultative or participative management style where there is open communication and employee involvement in decision making. Remember that our first learning intention is that you need to be able to explain the key principles of Lawrence and Narayas four drive theory. On this slide, I set out these key principles. Make sure that you include a summary of these key principles in your summary books. The first key principle underlying Lawrence and Narayas four drive theory is that according to that theory, employees are motivated by four drives or desires. That is, the drive to acquire, the drive to learn, the drive to bond, and the drive to defend. You may recall that I said that a significant difference between the three theories of motivation that we're looking at is in their conception of what motivates employees. Under Maslow's hierarchy of needs, employees are motivated by the satisfaction of their needs. Under Locke and Latham's goal-setting theory, employees are motivated by having challenging goals set for them to achieve. And now, under Lawrence and Narayas' four drive theory, employees are motivated by the four drives or desires that I've described. The second key principle is that according to Lawrence and Narayas' four drive theory, one employee can have each of these four drives at the same time. This is very different from Maslow's hierarchy of needs in that under Lawrence and Narayas' four drive theory, there is no ranking of the four drives. This means that the motivation strategies that a manager uses for an employee may need to respond to all four drives. This then leads us to the third key principle, um, which is that the relative strength of each drive may differ between employees. And this can mean that it is difficult for a manager to develop an appropriate motivation strategy for each employee. Uh, for example, one employee may have a very strong drive to acquire and a weaker drive to bond, whereas another employee may have a very strong drive to bond and a weaker drive to acquire. While in both cases the drive to acquire could be satisfied by a remuneration system that rewards individual performance uh, with bonuses, the first employee's drive to acquire might only be satisfied by a very large bonus, whereas the second employee, who places a strong value on teamwork, might be better satisfied um, by a remuneration system that rewards the performance of the team with a bonus. To summarise, under uh, Lawrence and Narayas' four drive theory, each employee is motivated by each of the four drives, but to different extents, depending on the strength of those drives for each employee. As a consequence, we have the fourth key principle, which is that the challenge for uh, the manager is to identify the drives profile of an individual employee. Um, 
This is necessary so that the manager can work out an effective strategy to motivate that employee. Uh, for example, an employee who has a strong drive to acquire but a low drive to learn will be motivated um, far more by a higher pay than by an interesting job. Well, this highlights a potential disadvantage of applying Lawrence and Arias for drive theory. It can be difficult and time consuming, firstly, for a manager to determine each individual employee's drive's profile, and secondly, to put in place a motivation strategy that is effective for that employee and their drives. In addition, it's not always appropriate to respond to an employee's drives. Uh, for example, uh, an employee who has a very strong drive to acquire may refuse to work in a team because they wish to be given a much a greater degree of credit for doing the work, uh, for example through higher pay. This can detrimentally affect the overall performance of the business because it discourages cooperation, collaboration and teamwork. This brings us to the end of the third and final video in this series on motivation theories. You should now be able to explain the key principles of Lawrence and Naraya's four drive theory. Insofar as the second learning intention is concerned, which is that you should be able to examine and apply the key principles of Lawrence and Naraya's four drive theory, you'll be achieving this learning intention through completing the learning activities in class. Don't forget to read the pages of the textbook that are referred to on the first slide and if you find any additional information from that reading that you think is useful, please supplement your Cornell notes with that information. Thank you for your attention.